Bosch. Biggity Bosch, Bosch. We are back in other place. Yeah, yeah, man. What we say, 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 yeah. Yeah. Back in on the bomber cloud. We say we back in on the bomber cloud. Oh, handy man, fucking hell. Thank you so much for the free pack. Going out to the pot shot. Going out to the Andrea. Going out to the Andronotus. Not seeing Andronotus for a while, actually, man. I hope he's blessed. And shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. We are back in our dear place. Right, let's see. Right, 75% CPU. Let's see if we can get Logic Rock in. Because I have got one tune that I won't mind. Getting sorted out. I'm not sure if I started this on stream or not. Yes, Airwolf with the 100 bits. Real Duppy Doo with the 100 bits before and Airwolf before. Handy with paper pen coming up with a five pack. What? When did you give out a five pack? Flipping it, Candy. Wow. Thank you so much. Once again, Daps coming through with the raid. Welcome, Raiders. Thank you so much for coming through. And shit, you are all absolute G's. I appreciate you all so, so much, man. Especially with how rocky I've been on Twitch, man. I know everyone's going to say, like, no, take time for you in it. Like, if you need to take time in that, take time in that. Mental health is important and shit, man. But, but you lot are actually supporting me. Doing things like this, you were supporting the label. You were supporting me musically. Kind of supporting me in real life a little bit as well. Because this cost of living crisis is getting a bit mad. And I, I, behind the scenes, I, I've been looking for, like, part-time work as well as full-time, a bit of full-time work if needs be. And no one's even dealing with an interview with me, do you know what I mean? So, it's a bit rough. It's a, it's a bit rough out there, so. Yeah, get me? So, uh, yeah. But still, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Right, let's see if we can get this rock in. Door. Let's see if it's not too... Glitchy, glitchy. Four years. Hold on one second. As someone really new to producing and can barely play an instrument, what tips you got with playing around remixing tracks? Um, if you barely, if you're really new to it, I would say if you could get, if you could learn a bit of the music theory music theory does help it can get complicated at times but it does it does really help in the long run in terms of being able to understand music and come up with ideas fluently and shit but also if you can get remix stems put them in put them in in the um put them into your door right make sure you've got the bpm set if you've got ableton if you can turn warp off i think it's warp that's in Ableton. If you can turn warp off, turn warp off. Most definitely. Didn't you? But put all the stems in the track. So you can hear what the actual track sounds like with just the stems and that. And then, say, mute or delete the drums, the stems for the drums. Say the kick and the snare. And then you try and come up with your own kick and snare for it. Do you know what I'm saying? And that so sort of, like create your own track, find a kick sample, and um, you know get your kicks in there where you want to place place your kicks and get a nice snare. Do you know what I mean? Find a snare sample that you like and place your snares and see if you can come up with a, come up with your own drums to to that actual track, and that will get you into like understanding how to make drums. And shit like that. Chopping samples is so much fun, but it is a bit advanced when um when first starting out, like chopping up samples, because you've got to understand what you're chopping up as well, and that what you're going for and stuff. Chopping up drum loops. Oh yeah, 
Like, find a drum loop, take the snare out of it, take the shakers out of it, take the kick out of it, find a couple of different drum loops. I do that a lot, to be fair. I find a few different drum loops, <clears throat> excuse me, in that. Take the snare, take different parts out of different drum, 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 drum loops and drum breaks and put them together. Build my own drum, my own drum, um, build my own breaks, you know, build my own loops and stuff. And it's funny, it's, it's, it's cool what different, like, what ideas you can actually come up with by doing things that way and stuff. Like in here, like, I think, uh, oh, oh, you're not liking it, are you? Right, is Wavelink work here? We've got, but yeah, Logic is showing up. Oh, how are we doing? How are we looking? Right, we're at 60, 59%, 59% CPU usage. We're not too jumpy, jumpy, yeah? We're not too jumpy, jumpy. As long as we're not too jumpy, jumpy, we're all right. Nice, thanks, perfect. Yeah, things like that. Because, like, when I, when I was first starting out, and seriously, to anybody first starting out producing, seriously, like, look in my face. Seriously. Um... Replicate tunes. Try and remake tunes. If you want to understand how to put things together, get your favourite tune. Hopefully it's not too complicated in that. Get your favourite tune and try and reverse engineer it. Try and recreate. You don't have to get it one-to-one, -one, but say, say you've got a track and it sounds like it's got strings in there. Try and recreate the string melody. Or like I was saying before, with the stems, delete my st delete my drum stems and try and recreate my drums. They don't have the sounds don't have to be one to one. The pattern doesn't have to be fucking exact. Do you know what I mean? But if you can get your head around how I have put my drums together and get close at least, or at least get like create your own drum drum break, like I was saying before, that you may like. That's a great start. That's a great start. But try and remake other tunes that are out there. When I was first starting out in school, all I was doing was remaking hip-hop beats. I had no inspiration whatsoever. I had no ideas in terms of how to come up with the tune. And that all I had was an old, like, I think it was an Atari-style computer, um, a sound modulator, a keyboard... And then the typing keyboard and a mouse. That's all That's all I had. And Cubase. And Cubase. Discord is a great place for new, new producers. Yes, Gank, most definitely. Now, if you're not part of my Discord, definitely join my Discord. I'm going to be, I'm going to be starting to get a lot more active uh, in there, especially because the remix competition is going to be, the deadline is coming up for that soon. And that with the remix competition. So, But yeah, man, don't be afraid to remake shit. Do not be afraid to remake shit. There's nothing wrong with it, especially when you're starting out. You're trying to figure things out. Like I was saying just a second ago, I had no idea when I was starting out what to make. All I had was my favourite hip-hop beats or my favourite soul beats and, do you know what I mean, stuff like that. You know, like... That's all I had in terms of, like, inspiration. I didn't have any idea how to build my own tune or what how to start with my own tune. So it was a case of, like, trying to understand what it meant, do you know what I mean, to actually make a track. Trying to understand what it meant to add a bass line, add some strings, add some trumpets, add a kick, add a snare, add some shakers, add a hi-hat. Do you know what I'm saying? And that like and my first tune, I think my first tune that I read made was um Take It Outside by Buster Rhymes. And that I it's Buster Rhymes and the Flip Mode Squad. I always thought it was on the Imperial album, but it was on the Buster Rhymes um Buster Rhymes um When Disaster Strikes album. And that really simple beat doom which turns out to be a classical um, music sample um, and really simple drums <laughs> do you know what I mean and get the hi-hats in there t -t 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 -t. really simple 
all I all I knew was like that's how the drum goes, right? So what what's a snare? Okay, there's a folder for the snares in here. It says snares. Okay, cool. Snares. Go through snares. Oh, that sounds close like the snare that was in that thing. In that. Do not be afraid to use the stock sounds that you've got in your door. More than likely, you'll have a smaller collection of sounds in your door rather than having folders and folders and folders of samples and having nowhere to start because of choice paralysis. In the beginning, the less you've got, the better. Because you're not overwhelmed with all of this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Unless you're focused in on getting a particular sound. So, again, sample packs. In the beginning, sample packs, bro. Choice paralysis. I fucking hate choice paralysis, man. It's It really holds me back in terms of workflow. It kills my workflow every time, me, because I just end up just staring at a line, loads of lines of text, of plugins and sounds and shit like that. Like I'm at that pay, I'm at that point now, but but the re- the reason why it's not that much of a problem for me and stuff is because I've got more of an idea where sounds are, and in Logic, I can just pull up my actual sound folder my audio folder with all of my sounds in that's pretty organised on the right here and stuff. And uh, I love sample packs as well, but in the beginning of making tunes, there was just too much stuff. There was just too much stuff. I had all the cracked pl- all the cracked plugins, Waves Diamond Bundle and all that, which had like something stupid, like 2,000 different fucking plugins in there. Mate. And I had no idea what any of them did. I know I had no idea what any of them were, but I had all of them. So yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes, Cosmos, I'm back. We're working on some tunage. Hopefully, this tune will fucking run in it. It seems to be all right with me, like chatting shit at the moment. So yeah, right. This is a tune that I've been working on recently. It's called Weird Science. I'm using the actual like some vocal samples from the Weird Science movie and shit. <laughs> Is that all right? Can you hear that? Is that is that, is that working? Nice. Is that is that cool? Yeah. Wee. Yes, Ashley. <laughs> Okay, look, you know how you're always talking about how you can simulate all this stuff on the computer? You know? What's the difference? Why can't we simulate a girl? Well, it's, it's not fashion, it's like it. Well, I know that, but, you know, we can, we can use it. Why? We can ask it questions. We can, we can put it in real-life situations and see how it reacts. The man and shit, you'd love it. Well, what about your girl in, um, Canada? <clears throat> anyway, get to work. Okay, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Cool. 
cool. Whilst we're here then, I might as well show you some other stuff that I've been working on. You know, whilst, you know, whilst we're here. Whilst we're here. Yeah. Uh, it take, you know what? Actually, I need to um, work on this tune that's coming up here. It is a hip-hop tune. Uh, I've got vocals for it as well. I need to record vocals for it, so I might actually get these down now whilst on stream and shit. But I'm kind of like, I'm, this is making me, this is making me very happy that everything is working okay. It seems to be working okay. And just nice, just sitting nicely around 65, you know, 65% CPU. So, hmm, we're all right. What's your master channel volume set to? I never move them, so they're always at zero. I'll always move my faders in terms of adjusting overall volume rather than touching... Um, the stereo output or the master output, I just leave them exactly where they are. Like that, but... hey. Tell me, what would you do if nothing computes now? Are you stuck in a truth that isn't? Nothing to do with how you can move, looking to prove and pursue your vision. Steady infused with talent accrued, and now in position to do your bidding. How would you use it? Would you refuse all the taboos and rules that come with it? Because if it's music. I well, in terms of limiters, because. Maximizers and limit maximizers and limiters are more or less the same thing, but they they approach what we're doing differently. They approach the same thing in different ways, I think, and that because I've always been scared of using limiters because I don't understand how they work. Like especially when compared to a clipper, <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like I understand how a clipper works, but in terms of limiters, like limiters always baffle me a little bit. Except for the LA two A. The LA two A just sounds nice. But it's just like gain is like peak peak gain and peak re, uh, peak reduction. That's it. They're the only two controls on there. So it's like simple enough for the LA two A um uh limiting compressors and shit you know so it's always a bit of a mad one with clippers and limiters i do use clippers i've been using clippers a lot more recently uh i think just one on here I produce this looking to move and improve my spirit. I'm used to letting it loose with something to prove. Couldn't ex I think well, I think Dr. Gank's a lot more clued up with things like that than me, to be fair. Exclude or reduce my spirit. And since you didn't include, maybe even try to diffuse. Not amused, I just sit my spirit and let you think that it's cool till I spill exclusives, giving them truths. I renew my spirit. <laughs> and if the shoe fits, ready to. Um, but when it comes to vocals now, because I've been recording my own vocals for so long, I've definitely got a more of an idea overall how to approach mixing and getting the best out of vocals. Like it's that. a moving, choosing any and improving, proving to many that it's many methods he's using, using any and then every sentence and using any. No problem, Mickey, mate. No problem. Any and every enemy moving Who's this nuisance with a bag of tunes he's tuned in Music that shows you how to do this Do this competition to you look stupid and clueless No one true, they just confusing how to use it Tell me, what would you do if nothing computes Now you stuck in a truth that isn't Nothing to do with how you can move, looking to prove and pursue your vision. Steady in. 
if you can mix down intense complex if you can mix down enough not need a limit of it can come out less distorted in the final mix but personally i always have at least uh the limiter on the master i do have it on the stereo master but it's in the form of ozone ozone's maximizer <laughs> if there's any limit on that I'm using on the master, it's that. It's that one. And only that one. And shit. Because that's always been the thing that I'll use in terms of getting more volume out of the track. And shit. But yeah. I'm not used limiters anywhere else. And shit. I feel like I'm weird for it because <laughs> everyone else is using limiters. I was like, don't you understand limiters? Like, no, not really, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making myself out to be that great, really. Am I? <laughs> I'm destroying. I'm destroying the dream. Destroying the dream. <laughs> but this is it, like. There's not really any rules. There's basics. There's the basic rules of physics in terms of how sound moves, how signals work and shit like that. There's the basic rules of physics. Outside of that, there's not really any rules in terms of, you know, what you can do in terms of creativity. But the more you understand it, the more you understand that, the better, like the more you understand the basic rules, the better you can break them or bend them. Do you know what I'm saying? That like, because especially for drum and bass, we are at the forefront of like innovation when it comes to sound design and do you know what I mean? Ideas and creativity with music. We are literally at the forefront of it. We come up with all of the ideas, every other genre nicks them. Do you know what I mean? It's all good. <laughs> and shit, mate. When it comes to bass music, electronic music, and sound design, like, yeah. I'm going to say it. Yeah. We are at the forefront of... We literally are at the forefront of innovation when it comes to sound design. I'm going to claim it for drum and bass. I am going to claim that. Fuck is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what would you do if nothing computes? Now you stuck in a truth that isn't mm -hmm. Nothing to do with how you can move Looking to prove and pursue your vision Steady infused with talent accrued And now we're in position to do your bidding How would you use it? Would you refuse all the taboos and rules that come with it? Cause if it's music I produce It's looking to move and improve my spirit I'm used to letting it loose with something to prove Couldn't exclude or reduce my spirit And since you didn't include Maybe even try to diffuse Not amused I just sit my spirit And let you think that it's cool Till I spill exclusives Giving them truths I renew my spirit <laughs> And if the shoe fits, ready to move in Choosing any and improving Proving to many that it's many methods he's using Using any and then every sentence and abusing Any and every enemy moving Who's this nuisance with a bag of tunes he's tuned in Music that shows you how to do this Do this competition till you look stupid and clueless No untrue, they just confusing how to use it Yeah, SK. Yeah, that's SK. SK is an absolute G. Absolute G. I'm not, I'm not going to do any more to this, but in terms of basic things that I would do on my vocals, to start off with in the chain, EQ, compression, and de acid in terms of sibilance and stuff like that. A lot of people would end up just like taking the highs off in the EQ, but I prefer using a ds because it's not as harsh in terms of removing those sort of resonant sounds and stuff. And that Pro Q3, LA2A style compressor, saturator of your choice, DSR, there you go, Bosch. I need to go, I need to get the Pro, I need to upgrade and get the Pro Q3 to be fair, because I've got the Pro Q2 here.
Pro Q2 right here. I think I'll put it on now, to be fair, because I would use the. Where is it? There you go. LA2A compressor. If you can get the original, close to the original one from UAD, you might as well. Oh, you use Ableton? Nice. Gank is on Ableton. Ah, uh, your gankage. <laughs> Tell me, what would you do if nothing computes? Now you stuck in the truth that isn't nothing to do with how you can move. Looking to prove and pursue your vision. Steady infused with talent accrued. And now in position to do your bidding. How would you use it? Would you refuse all the taboos and rules that come with it? Exclamation point, Discord. You'd be able to jump in and have some, have some discussions. Get in the production talk. Talk about some ideas and shit, mate. But yeah, man. If you if you're looking Ableton Gankage, Gank is the man and stuff. Like, right? I'm good. I'm I'm good with with Logic, but for Ableton, which a lot of people are on, like, Gank is the man in it. Cause if it's music I produce It's looking to move and improve my spirit I'm used to letting it loose with Right, it is a weird thing as well Cause before I was using a level in me A level in um, What was it, a level in compressor Which is just another word for like A limiter in it Do you know what I mean I use FL We need, we need, we need more FL users in the Discord to be fair and that so then there are people like there is somebody that can there's people that can link up with each other on the same doors and like bounce ideas and shit off each other because even though like because even though I use logic there'll be things that somebody else who uses logic will know that I don't know and there'll be things that I know about logic do you know what I mean that they won't know so the more producers that are actually together, do you know what I mean, doing bits and sort of chatting with each other and collaborating, the better really, and stuff. Who else? Who else in the chat actually uses FL? How many? How many Ableton? How many Ableton users have we got? How many FL users? How many Logic users? Any Cubase users? I think Daps is a Cubase guy. Aren't right, you Daps? Diggity Daps. I'm sure you're a Q based guy. No, oh, Epicenter is a Q based guy. I use Ableton, my tunes are getting better, but I still have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> are you understanding the in instruments more? Ableton and my thing, but I do have FL and Logic. Ah, I was wondering what you were using, Kruger, to be fair. I was wondering <laughs> what you were using. Ah, so you are able to man them as well with your drum prank programming. If you want some tips on on some nice drum programming, you know I mean, if Kruger is willing to let off some couple, not necessarily secrets, but you know, little things, give Kruger a follow, innit? He don't do no production streams or anything like that. He just like shells down with tunes in it, but. I also have Serato Studio as well. Uh, I was looking at Serato Sample before. Because <clears throat> Serato Sample is supposed to have the best like stem separation thing in it. Out of everything that's out there, to be fair. Bada bum bum bum. Right. Something to prove, couldn't exclude or reduce my spirit. And since you didn't include, maybe even try to diffuse, not amused. I just sip my spirit and let you think that it's cool till I spill exclusives, giving them truths. I renew my spirit. <laughs> and if the shoe fits, ready to move in, choosing any and improving, proving to many that it's many methods he's using, using any and then every sentence and abusing, any and every enemy moving. Who's this nuisance with a bag of 
tunes. He's tuned in music that shows you how to do this. Do this competition to you. Look stupid and clueless. No, untrue. They're just confused on how to use it. Tell me, what would you do if nothing computes? Now you stuck in the truth that isn't. Nothing to do with how you can move. Looking to prove and pursue your vision. Steady infused with talent accrued. And now we're in position to do your bidding. How would you use it? Would you refuse all the taboos and rules that come with it? Cause if it's music I produce, it's looking to move and improve my spirit. I'm used to letting it loose with something to prove, couldn't exclude or reduce my spirit. And since you didn't include, maybe even try to diffuse, not amused. I just sit my spirit and let you think that it's cool till I spill exclusives, giving them truths. I renew my spirit. <laughs> And if the shoe fits, ready to move in Choosing any and improving Proving to many that it's many methods he's using Using any and then every sentence and abusing Any and every enemy moving Who's this nuisance with a bag of tunes he's tuned in Music that shows you how to do this Do this competition to you look stupid and clueless No untrue, they just confused on how to use it It's underneath the red. Yeah. Oi. Get bigger. Oi. Oi. Increase your size when I tell you to. Good sir. How dare you. Uh, okay. Okay. You're going to stay small like that? All right. Fine. So... Highlight all of these. I leave the actual buses because do you know what I mean they I don't need to actually change those volumes because I'll be controlling the volume that is going into the actual buses themselves by these things here. These little con blue controls here. Yes, Jack Digital, yeah. Logic user for thirteen years, maybe, maybe even longer. Two thousand and nine. 2009-2010 I got onto Logic and that a little bit before Logic 10 actually came through and shit but yeah man how you doing Jack man you good hope you bless but yeah in terms of like doing a home master so getting all, what I'm doing is getting the track to playable volume I wouldn't consider this a master, but these are the things that I do. Do you know what I mean? To get get things to a playable volume. If you like, you know. So I've got my meters. I love these meters. 
these VU meters. For some reason, I had the first one, which was just a single meter. And this was what I gauged in terms of the, like, um, input, um, input volume, like, peak, you know. I, for the longest time, thought this and true peak, like, level meters were the exact same thing. They're not. <laughs> they are not. So I'm thinking with this, I'm thinking that minus three on here or minus six on here is the same as minus three or minus six on a level meter. And I'll show you what you, I'll show you what I mean. So here's a level meter. And now if I play both of these. So on here it's hitting minus five, but on the level meter it's hitting minus twelve. On the VU meter, for the longest time, because I didn't Tell really understand. You if nothing I'll be honest, for the longest time because I really didn't understand what type of meter the VU meter was and I still don't get it to be fair <laughs> if I'm honest I still don't understand what type of meter it is but because I've been so used to it in terms of getting a getting like a decent home master do you know what I mean to play or like hope like mastering tunes in terms of hip hop because at least with hip hop and other stuff it's not as crazy trying to mix as ma and master tunes um than drum and basses um but yeah like for me on a vu meter it would be minus six between minus six and minus three i would be going for in that but on the on the on the level meter because the level meter is peak and you go to you can go to true peak as well but standardly as soon as you open it it's peak which I thought it was just that they were both the same thing, which they're not. If Daps is still in here, he might be be able to explain a bit more um, in regards to it. Not that, you know, I'm trying to get free, like, free lessons out of him. Because <laughs> Daps is obviously a master in it. You all know why I go out with Daps in it. Daps is a bad man in it, you get me? Um, but yeah, that's what, that's what I would be using, so... As you can see, they're both not the same thing in terms of peak or if I go to true peak. Still not the same. So in terms of true peak, I'm actually quieter. I'm a lot more quieter in terms of true peak than, than I am with the VU meter. So I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking I'm not as loud as I as I am, <laughs> basically. But then from there, that's what I'm sending into. Um, so the next thing I would have up is, I think on here it was um, Prism. Uh, there we go, yeah. Prism. I like this because it's just that, that nice, clean. I like it. It's a nice, clean way of seeing what, what is going in. Before I get to using overdrive, which is a, um, I think a saturation unit. I don't think Tell it's a distortion unit. Tell me, what would you unit. do if nothing can... Even though it might be a distortion unit. Um, and then, ozone. So in terms of two, the, or in terms of the two things that I use to get loudness, overdrive, which I just stick on. There's no, I've not put no extra drive on. I just thought, well, there's like 25, like 0.25 dB, so there's a little bit. And that tone on full. And then. Like I said, um, ozone. I, you know what? I'm not going to say I'm, I'm as good as daps or anything like that, but since getting these. Um, Bayer Dynamic DT 990s. Oh my God, I can hear so much more in tunes now. Like I don't know why it's taken me twenty years, my whole my whole time making tunes. It's taken me to to get a pair of production headphones, 
and stuff for the longest time, me. Like, and that's what I mean. Like, it's things like that where it's not to say that, like, I've been doing it right, but at least for what I've been doing, it's been working. People have liked what I've been doing. Obviously, there's there's room for improvement, and I've learned a lot of good tips along the way and shit in regards to making my music sound a lot better. But at least I was do I knew enough of the basics, you know, to not distort, to not peak fold like peak levels and things like that, to give myself headroom. EQ is my best friend if I really want to try and clean up sounds and stuff before it gets to the point of just use a different sound rather than trying to brute force stuff you know eq is my best friend do you know what i mean that was the greatest thing that you know a lot of music teachers and music like producers told me like eq is your best friend and that understand eq understand what's going on with eq in that at the time there weren't that many courses talking about the different types of eq so i didn't know about linear eq in like linear phase and things like that for the longest time. It's only the last few years I've grown an understanding um, to things like that. But yeah, all I've had for the longest time is just the basics. And then if I don't understand something, I just don't use it because I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? if, I, if I don't understand what it's doing to be able to use it again, and replicate it and things like that, then I don't like touching things like that because I, I want to be able to have control over what I'm doing. But it just, like at the same time, it speaks volumes into like how much time I actually had to learn and how much I just focused on creating ideas and getting things as good as possible, especially with hip hop. Again, you can, there's, it's not as, strict with hip-hop in terms of mix downs and stuff you can be a lot more um rough a lot more experimental a lot more rough around the edges with things when it comes to hip-hop and soul and stuff like that um but with drum and bass it's a lot harder so yeah how much uh, how much automation automation do you use for again for the longest time didn't use automation hardly use it now unless it's on effects and things like that Hard to use it now. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm shattering. I'm shattering. I'm shattering images. <laughs> I'm shattering images here. Like seriously. Like let me. Let me give you. Let me show you an example. So, um, let's get let's get the chopper remix up. Let's get the chopper remix up. Yeah. Uh, where are you? Was it twenty one? Oh my god, it was! I made it in twenty twenty one. Wow! Right, so Bosch. Uh, which one is it? Normal one. Is it? Was it the V two? No, it was a normal one. Right, let me show you. Let me show you in terms of. How basic thing, how basic shit is. Hopefully, some things still work. <laughs> a banger is a banger. Don't matter how you made it. That this is it. This is it. Like, I wish I could do the neuro stuff. If not, like, really get into the weeds. And that, and to be fair, it is it is within the last few years. It's, co in, it's coincided with me having a mental breakdown and therefore needing therapy and needing to be clinically, like, signed off work and all that kind of good stuff <laughs> for, me, for me to be able to have more actual time to, like, focus in on how to actually produce and stuff. Like, I've learned more about producing in the last... Um, in the last, what's going on here? Is this no? Oh, what tune is this? Sounds theme, right? But yeah, again, let me get sorry. Sorry, I thought it was a um, thingy remix. Where's the remix? Apologies, where are you? There you are. 
Bosch. Another one. There we go. I heard a guy on Daps, on Daps, makes beats on his on his phone. Yeah, there's a few people. I was talking to um, I was talking to Dub General before about people that are making um, <coughs> excuse me, making beats on iPads. They've not got no computers, no laptops, or anything like that. Everything is made on the iPad. <laughs> right, mixing desk. In terms of plugins, Bosch. EQ, 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 delay, EQ, EQ, side chain, side chain, EQ, EQ, stereo, duck, side chain, chroma, reverb, bit of saturation, bit of saturation. <laughs> uh, where's the basses? So there's my sub. So saturation, sesh, sesh one saturation, EQ, side chain, and leveling tool, which I had this for time, and that tube leveling amplifier. So I thought it would be good for basses to be able to sort of level out basses and shit. So every, no matter what note the bass hits, the sub hits, it still has that like the same amount of impact. I had no idea that this was this was based on. The original LA two A. Longest time, <laughs> no idea. But at least this one's got like, you know, more controls in terms of the attack release ratio, um, in the dry wet. But this one is just straight gain and peak reduction, and stuff. That's it. That's it on the sub. Uh, where's me drums? Uh -huh. <laughs> So, where's my snares? So, there's my kick, kick, sash one saturator. Overdrive, channel EQ, transient shape are so saturate first, overdrive, channel EQ, and then transient shape are. That's what I've got on the kick. <laughs> like, that's all I've got on the kick. Snare, the snares aren't even in a group. I should be bussing things more, but I did again. I didn't understand buses, like drum buses and things like that. So if I don't understand it, I just don't do it. <laughs> snares, I got I got one snare in terms of the EQ. Just on that snare, most of the EQ. So it's just more of the highs and then a bit of reverb. On that, and then for the main body of the snare, I've got overdrive, fresh air, and then Pro Q. I don't know why it's coming out like that, really, but yeah, it's supposed to be Pro Q and fresh air from Slate Digital. Stuff. Uh, oh no, I have. Oh no, tell a lie. I have actually got the kick and the snares. Yeah, the kicks and the snares. They're going in. They are actually going into a bus. Where's the bus? Where's the bus? There it is. And then I've got the perks of the bus. So what I've got are the bus. Right. So I'm lying. Sorry about that. I apologize. But what I've got on the bus. Another compressor overall. I got told by what's his name? Uh, nomin, nomin. I always, I can't, I never can pronounce his name, but he does that education and base basically website. Enemy nominated, nominum. I'm so bad. <laughs> I'm so bad. 
But yeah, he said to like, you know, get if you're in Logic, get this version, get, get this circuit, the vintage FET, and these parameters on there. Really fast attack, slow release, and shit, high ratio, not so high um, compression, uh, uh, threshold, sorry, and shit, bosh. So that's on that. Then I've got the leveling tool, so I level all, all the drums and shit. So you could say that's the limiter, I think, for its compressor, really. It's the leveling compressor. So I've got two compressors on there. Didn't understand, but it worked. Another EQ, doing nothing. <laughs> and then fresh air. Yeah, just a, why is that working? But the other one didn't work. That's weird. But yeah, just to, hit, to like make the snare a bit more. Yeah, man. And then I've got the percussion. Just on a different one, and I've got that. I always put the percussion with some stereo width, fresh air again, just to add some airiness to the percussion. And then EQ, just a dip around the highs, really. But yeah, uh, I guess we want to know if it was uh, press the vinyl like this. Yes, it was. This is... A, I've been... I've, I will admit, I have been using... Well, not even admit. I, like, a lot of people actually do this. I have been using this as a template for all of my tunes going forward because when it came to mixing... When it came to mastering, Epicenter is doing all... Well, was. I'm not sure if he is. But at the time, he was doing all of the mastering for Dread. And, that, and he told me he cannot get this tune to sound any better than what I've done in terms of my home master. And, that, and then when it came to sending off for uh, the vinyl press, and that, yeah, it was this same, this same master that he used for the vinyl press as well. And shit, I had to turn it down a bit into because it couldn't be too high. Um, obviously, because in terms of cutting to cutting, um, using the needle to cut to um, the lacquer or the acetate that and that, but yeah, it was my solved the every every digital tune that you're hearing and every vinyl vinyl version that you're hearing and that like yeah, it's all it's all me, it's all me and stuff. And since then, this has been the benchmark in terms of how how to get. My tunes in a good place. Yes, Dropsy. Played your tune ears before during the show. Isn't that me? Fucking sick tune. Well, definitely a template. And and from there, it was like, that's where I understood um, why people use templates, why people reuse drums and stuff. Once they've got good drums that work, good things that work, there's no point in starting from scratch, especially when you're thinking about workflow and trying to get, again, trying to get ideas out and that, and not being hold, held back by having to search for this and that and this and that, you know. I got it at that point. It's like, oh, okay then. And it, it wasn't. It wasn't even just like, in terms of the master and the vinyl master, it was the fact that so many people were saying to me, "Oh, but like the mix style on the tune, how it sounds, everything, and stuff." I actually did. I actually did a full breakdown of this um, uh, for the members club, actually. In that, I think it's like a 40 minute video, but I go through everything in terms of how I made it all and stuff. Like, and yeah, it was a case of like just less is more. When you look at the tracks again, it's like when you look at what's on there, just really simple stuff side chains, EQs, some different um, distortion units like Tempar, which is free. If you can find Tempar, absolutely amazing distortion. Only got a few um, presets. And stuff, but for what it does to bases and things like that, absolutely love it, mate. It's so good. 
And that just as an example. Uh, oh God. Oh, it's only on that bit. Uh, have I got it anywhere else? Not really. It's only on stabby bits. Okay. But it is a good... Terms. But it is a good distortion unit, especially for free and stuff. But yeah, man. Not much going on. <laughs> Even with the buses. Not, not much going on. And even with that being said, I wouldn't necessarily say less is more as like a general rule because I think I remember saying somebody saying in the chat, asking in the chat if less is more. Do I think less is more? Um, I wouldn't say less is more is for a general rule. It all depends on what you are trying to make and stuff. So as an example, uh, where's Solus? There's a tune I made called Solus where I made a point of keeping it like very stripped back and that like with this hold on with this there's like 55 tracks in this in in that tune which apparently is not that much compared to other people but then again i do a lot of bouncing down like i, I do a lot of committing to a sound because i still work as if i've got like a really old iMac that's about to die so i can't do i can't have too many instances of simps open and stuff like that um, <laughs> but yeah, like as an example, this this track called Soulless, even though it's got my vocals on it as well, there was I I wanted to keep it as minimal and as like dark and as ominous as possible. Do you know what I mean? Even in regards to like being able to mix it down and master it for a home master, a lot easier in shit. Um. So yeah, I would always say I I would always say it depends on what you're trying to make. If you're trying to make a dark, stripped back tune, so yeah, fifty one tracks, fifty one tracks, one two three four five six, seven eight nine are muted, so forty two tracks then. <laughs> <laughs> This hi-hat is two knives being hit together. Soulless, no motion. Deeper than the depths of every ocean Floating, choking on the potent that I'm smoking Notice this piece is not the one for low provoking Cause I'd, I'd like, I'd, every now and again I like to set myself the challenge of making an intro With as minimal percussion as possible Hopeless, no focus Soaking in the blood of So it's, you do, at that point You have to focus on atmosphere on ear candy, on effects, on, do you know what I mean, ambience to try and build, try and build a drop, so to speak, do you know what I'm saying? Out of my opponents. So all you're getting is two knives being here together. Spork remix. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, I'm so glad this is working. Like I've been wanting to do production streams for so long, man. But the last time, last couple of times I did it, it was so jumpy. Soulless, no motion. So many frames. Deeper than the depths of every ocean, floating, choking on the potent that I'm smoking. It varies. Sometimes it depends on how I get the idea for a tune, and that sometimes I'll start with a melody. Um, do you know what I mean? And, that, and then I'd try and build from that melody. And that melody might be the intro melody or it might be a bass melody like bop, 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 try and keep it in my brain, get to my computer, get the bass line down and that, and then build the drums around it and stuff. Or it might be a like, do you know what I mean? I did. That's going to be more for an intro kind of thing. So it all depends. 
it all depends <laughs> on how you start in the idea. But in the beginning, in the beginning, it's whatever you want to do. So if you if you find a sample in a sample pack and that's it, that works for an intro and stuff, use it. Just chop it up a little bit. Switch it around in that. Do you know what I mean? Chop it up, switch it around in that. Put a chorus on it and a little bit of distortion, a little bit of EQ. Do you know what I mean? Reverse the end of it. Chop the end off and reverse the end of, the end of it. Do you know what I mean? Do something so it's not just a dry sample. Do you know what I mean? And stuff like, hey, yeah, try and do something with it. But if you find something that works, just alter it. Alter it so then it's more yours than it's just the thing from the sample pack. Do you know what I'm saying? And shit. Um, but yeah, it all depends. It all depends on how how the inspiration comes to you, basically. Because I've never been able, I've never been able to sit down and be like, I'm going to make a tune like this. I've never been able to do it. I try and do it, and something else always comes out and stuff. Unless it's jungle, you can't go. You can't go wrong with jungle. Start off with some amens, some eight oh eights, some nice ambient pads and things like that. Do you know what I'm saying? And stuff. So yeah, it all depends on how inspiration hits you, really. But in the beginning, use whatever it is that you want to use, or again, have reference points. Have reference points. So you know. Challenge yourself to make a tune like T.I., you know, where it is a lot of just subs and really interesting drums and, like, sound effects in different parts and stuff. Like, try and make a tune like Hybrid, DJ Hybrid. Try and make a tune like Mosey. Do you know what I mean? Try and make a tune like Dillinger. Like, try and, like, reference all of these people. Don't be afraid to copy them and mimic them. Just know that you just can't release the shit. Or if you are, I'll put it out for free. <laughs> and that if you really want other people, if you're really proud of your work and you want other people to hear you, put it on your SoundCloud. Put it on your Bandcamp. Definitely set up a Bandcamp as well as a SoundCloud and shit. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, don't be afraid to remake stuff and re like reverse engineer and, you know, try and figure out things. Try and figure out how other people are doing things. And that, especially by listening to the track, and that, especially in the, like, especially in this day and age where you can get things separated and stuff. So if there's if if there's a track by say John B, and you just want to hear what he's done with the drums, you'll be able to put it through Serato sample and separate all of the shit so you can just hear the drums and then you can separate like okay the hi hi hats from what I can hear the hi hats are going. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got to think about where the snare's hitting. So it's like... Do you know what I mean? And you're starting to piece it together. Do you know what I mean? You start to piece together how each individual bit fits. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. I'm not just waffling. <laughs> I hope what I'm saying is making sense. I find when I'm listening to music now, I am trying to listen to all the different elements and picturing them in in the door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Basically, that's it, basically. But yeah. Smoking. So I'll stop teasing you <laughs> with this intro. <laughs> In terms of like, is this on the list to do a breakdown? No, I'll do a little breakdown of this then before it even comes out. And that. So in terms of what's going on in this tune, first off, hopefully this opens. Yay! Frozen fruit. Contact play series, 25 years with native instruments. Simple. Find something else to go with it. Hopefully it works. I want 
wanted something like low down, more in the lows, but simple. And after that, I used Vital. And is that. It's not telling me what preset. Oh, Float Clouds preset, I think. Float Clouds, bro. Where did I get that from? I'm not sure where I got that from, but yeah, float clouds. And then because I wanted to figure out like, in terms of like drawing the shapes in here in this LFO, I just messed about and just drew some shapes in here. And it's like. Because the timing's off on it, so it doesn't start. It doesn't start like where it's supposed to. It starts in the middle. So if you if you look closely here, if you look closely, if my mouse thing will go big, yeah, there you go. If you look closely on this section, it starts here. It starts in the middle. It doesn't start there. I think it's because that's where you can move where the start point is. So fast. Yeah, you can use this dial here to move where the start point actually is in this LFO. You know what I mean? I was kind of messed up the timing a little bit. Of the time in a little bit. Yeah, bring it back. Ooh. Yeah, because I want the, I want the beer to fall on the doon doon doon. And that one, and that's what ends up gelling both of those sounds together. So it's like definitely always do not be afraid to use presets and that. But always go in and try and change it. Try and fuck it up and make it yours. <laughs> make it yours. But yeah, simple. Really simple. I wanted to keep it that way. Do you know what I mean? Wanted to keep, make, make it simple. So what have I done here? So this is just effects. Uh, I think that's coming from this, which is... Metal machines, I think, yeah, kinetic metal, and that, but that can be a bit CPU intensive sometimes. So I just got it down. I think sometimes because we, because you can have it on motion as well. So normally, when this is activated, when you're actually using the kinetic metal, you can have it on motion, so it's just randomly moving around. But sometimes I just want to get a certain pattern with it and have that looping rather than just having it randomly doing what it's doing in the background and stuff. So I'll bounce it down. I'll bounce it down and just have those sections. Just atmospherics. Soulless, no motion, deeper than the depths of every ocean, floating, choking on the potent that I'm smoking, notice this beast is not the one for low provoking, hopeless, no focus, soaking in the blood of my opponents, broken, still I hold the floors of every showman, open, doors amongst the hordes of the unchosen, seek shelter. 
terms of what i've got on these tracks these duplications so each track here is different in terms of the eq so i've eq'd each track different to get different things out of him and that's how some extra in the mid plus that's a stereo track as well rather than mono a fig for the eq yeah i've only got a, i've got a notch so i've only got a that's what's giving it top layer as the interest part so using automation to change it up as it's going through and that so again less is more i wanted to keep it minimal just subtle changes as it's going through and make it more about how dark and sinister it is sound is just like to add to it Bow. See, I love that <laughs> so with these what I did with these is I transposed each note and as you transpose because you're sort of speeding it up and slowing it down it kind of breaks up the sound and stuff so the higher you go it kind of breaks it up that's why you've got that like digga 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 boo and now i have also got effect tricks on here as well with a little bit of stutter and shit yeah Top. 
that's it. That's it, man. Sometimes that's all you need. When it came to the drums, just slowly build up the drums. So as you can see, to start here. Hats. Simple kick. If you can find a kick that works, use that kick. Stick with that kick. Use it. Yes, JD Bryson. Yeah, it has been a while, man. I hope you're blessed, man. 17 months, you know. Bombo Clark. That is commitment. Thank you so, so much, JD, man. Hope you, you, you and yours are blessed. But yeah, in terms of like, again, less is more. You can do that with the drums as well. Don't be afraid to just have simple drums to start off with and slowly build them up with different layers. Seek shelter. found that within a, I, feel like I think I found that in a perk loop and I just took certain bits out of that loop again finding loops and just little bits within loops that you can use for certain things like I like I like I love finding unusual sounds man just adds texture This is what I love this. And I get a bit of effects tricks. So you've got stutter, then tonal delay, and then X loop, which makes it bend up. Do you know what I mean? It makes the actual uh, thing bend up. things that you put in together. Devil fire smelter, helter, slipping through the visions of a skelter. That's kind of proud of you, even though it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I was kind of proud of it, it sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> Seek shelter, put down that gun, that won't help you. <laughs> Those lines do not connect. <laughs> <laughs> But again, not much, nothing to it at all. And now, but again, for the type of tune that it is, it works. So, long winded way of answering your question, Mickey. But yeah, <laughs> it all depends in terms of whether if less is more. It all depends on what you're making. It all depends on the tune. It all depends on the idea or the inspiration. Because in terms of, let's go to a busy track. So, oh, and if you really want to fucking talk about less is more. Oh my God, Lion Chant. I have a question. Yeah, Dropsy, ask away. Ask away. What volume should, should um, a kick be on? Again, depends on the tune. So let me cancel this. I've got the kick here. 
volume is at to minus 10.8 because I always have it at zero. I move it, man. <laughs> I, I do move it. So we're on the kick. We're on the kick now, balanced and stuff. It's just that one sound. Uh, EQ. So, yeah. Brick wall towards the end. Some more of the sub is coming through. A uh, little dip in the middle for, I think, the snare. I think because that is quite a fuddy, fuddy kick. And it's got Sashwan on. Bit of overdrive. Transient shapage. Sustain all the way down. So that this is. That's how it sounds normally. Um, let me bring it back for you. So you can hear the kick. Hold on. Yeah. That's it without without with the same sustain as normal and then bring the sustain down so it's a bit more of a yeah. and then I, I, I a lot of people talk about gain staging um I can't I my brain can't compute with gain state gain staging because I need I need to be able to see where all my volumes are at to be able to understand what's going on in the track. And if I've got gain staging on and I have to if I'm if I can't look at my faders and be able to see just by in terms of like levels what's going on, I I don't like it. If I have to click on a track and then go on the gain stage tool and then see where the volume is at with the gain staging and that it just kind of fucks with my head because for all intents and purposes, the fader will be at zero. So in my mind, I'm thinking that the fader is at zero. The volume is at zero. Do you know what I mean? And if I need, if I need to make any adjustments to the volume, then I'm going to move the fader rather than going in and using an, um, a gain staging tool. It's, it's more of a visual thing and that rather than with numbers and stuff like that. Because I think I'm more of a visual producer and learner than than like doing it by the numbers and stuff so i need to just be able to see what's going on and that when i went on on first glance and stuff so like yeah that's where i'm at with uh that's where i'm at dealing with uh with the gain staging thing yeah i can't use it it just fucks with my brain and that like even if it is down here and to make adjustments like small adjustments down here like are actually big adjustments in terms of you know how clustered together the dbs are and stuff when you get more to the bottom that's fine i'm used to it because when it gets down there it is tiny adjustments in terms of the volumes and that's needed just to help level things out um do you have a go-to drum file or just wing it i have started reusing um drum loops that i've made if i know that they work then i will reuse them but for the longest time for the last like say 15 years up until the last five years of, of the 20 years that i've been doing it it was always from scratch i would start every single track from scratch Every single one from scratch. It takes so much time, but it was fun being able to like draw things together. It was fun, but at the same time, we were on the older versions of doors. So with Logic now, and now I can just go to my audio folder. I've got a lot of things like sort of organized to like. You know to be able to easily find stuff that I, that I know is going to work and that I can use and shit and if I want to like there if I want risers I can just type in risers and it'll come up with all the different risers and it's just a case of, you know picking the one that picking the one that you want do you use a starter template though you use a starter template though right nope Nope. Only just gotten into 
um, only just started learning about how to set up templates. I do have a a, te- a, a mastering template set up there for like stem stem mastering, um, but in terms of like just starting tracks, no, I have no templates, man. It's normally just from scratch. And that, but I'm so quick in terms of knowing when things are, knowing pl- what plugins to use. Like I've got my my plugin favorites folder, so instead of having to like you know, go through loads of folders manually like this. Do you know what I mean? I've got my folders with all my favourite plugins, my my favourite go-to plugins and stuff like that. So it's more having things organised. And that the more I got into, like, organising my shit so it's easier to be able to get to what I need and what I know what works, or at least within the group of stuff that I know what works and shit, organization is key man organize your files organize your files organize your sounds once you've got your folders like done like once you've got the initial stages of organizing your stuff down it's easy going forward it is so easy going forward and not to keep up with it that would drive me mad i switched from ableton to logic and i and i had to customize my own template was the first with the, my own template was the first I spent a couple of weeks learning it. Fair play. Fair play. And, uh, let me show you the like, because I, I, yeah, I have got a mastering template. Hold on. Uh, new from template. So it should close that down. Uh, don't save because I've not made any changes. Mastering template. So I've got a mastering template here for STEM masters. And then so we've got all the things here at the bottom. So say, uh, I should have a pre-master in here actually. Do I have a pre-master? Because I've been wanting to get a bit more into actually mastering. Uh, minus three, minus. Twenty four bit. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. So I've got the sixteen bit one here. Import one seven five. We got the highs, got the mids, got over here for you so you can see it properly. Got here, we've got the pies here at the bottom, sections off in buses. So you can see from the track there, you've got the three buses one, two, and three. So one will be for the lows, two for, for the mids. for the highs and then from here that's where so you've got your linear EQs that are separated and then from here that's where you would add like saturation to um, each of the frequency bands to be able to bring it up all together for mastering personally this confuses me this could, this could, if I'm honest, this could, this confused the fuck out of me. If I'm honest, and that because, and maybe because I'm not a master mastering engineer, the engineer. That's why it doesn't make any sense to me. I need to make another spliff to be fair, and that I do need to get some food. If I'm honest, <laughs> um, but um, to me. From my understanding, um, I'll play this actually. And that's at minus three. 
So there's a bit of there's a bit of headroom um, to the track. But for me, from my understanding, the mastering engineer is there to make the track loud at industry standards. Where personal engineers come into it, like so having your favorite mastering engineer because you like the way that the way that they color the sound for you. So whether it's coloring the sound with an analog gear to use like using analog gear to make it louder but but that analog gear will have its own coloration of the sound like depending on how long it's been used how old it is how much it's been worn in um if it's if it if there's tubes or valves involved how worn the, the tubes and valves are like every piece of equipment will have its own way of coloring the sound um, and enhancing the sound, so to speak, if that's what the job of the hard piece of hardware or plugin is. So, me going into going into it in terms of everything is down to the mix down. Everything is down to the mix down. You know, if there's a problem, if there's a problem with the tune, fix it in the mix. Don't fix it in the master. This is this is what I've been taught. This is what I've learned. This is what I've seen from a lot of um, um, like mastering engineers and stuff like that. They always say fix it in the mix. Don't 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 fix it in the master. Yes, Cosmos, bless up for coming through, man. Bless up for coming through. So for me, if I've done everything in the mix, Why do I then need to separate everything into three different sections and then effectively alter <coughs> alter what I've done in the mix by affecting the different frequency the frequency bands with either saturation or this, that and the third, you know, effectively leaving the end product of the sound down to the engineer kind of bypassing everything that i've done in the mix because for me personally all i would want the mastering engineer to do is make it louder using their equipment because i won't be i can't make it as loud as it needs to be um using my own and stuff if the mix is good it only needs to be loud enough that's what i'm saying and for the, like a lot of when you when you when you speak to a lot of it, like mastering engineers, like watching loads of master master classes with engineers and stuff like that, their their dream job apparently is when they don't have to fix anything in the mix. All they have to do is run run the tune through their equipment, listen in their studio with the best with treated walls and the best speakers so they can hear everything so if there's if there is anything in there that may need a little bit of an eq tweak or anything like that then cool you know but that would be the dream job for a lot of mix and mix engineers but initially that's not what they get paid for at that level when they're charging grands and they're engineering for do you know what i mean like Sorry, mastering, master en engineers, engineering for like the top fucking, the top artists in this, that, and the third. As long as you pass it to an engineer and it's not too loud, clipping, etc., you're good. Well, well, that's because you are good. You are as you are good as a producer. How I, I'm, this is what I've been taught, isn't it? Coming through, this is what I've been taught. So that's why, like, if I don't understand something, like a plugin or anything like that, I just won't use it because I don't want to fuck it up for the potential mix engineer, or sorry, mastering engineer that's going to sort it out for me and make it... <laughs> make it... Give it the sheen, do you know what I mean? Give it the sheen and shit, so... But yeah, man. That's why, so that's why like mastering sort of the when it gets to the creative side of mastering that's where it confuses me a little bit because it's just like i just want you to make it loud and that's where when it comes to mine in terms of making it loud like 
overdrive, so some a bit more distortion to, just to add more loudness before it goes into the maximizer, and then using the maximizer to get that last level of loudness in terms of LUFS or RMS, trying to keep up with like drum and bass standards and stuff like that, really. I feel like in any EDM, you uh, now you have to learn to understand a little mastering because everyone is so loud now. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. Just in the initial, especially in the, the initial stages of like getting your track heard. And that's so you're not at the point of you know, sending your music off and paying for a mastering engineer to master your tunes and stuff, but you want your idea to be heard. You've got to figure out how to fucking make it loud enough to compete with everything else out there somehow, or unless you're willing to waste money on getting a tune mastered to it for it to be loud, knowing that you might need to make some changes further down the road when you do get to play it in a club or... You know, you do get it to a label and the label turns around and says, oh, this needs changing, this needs a boost, this, 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 and the, and this, that, and the third. Sort that out in the mix. And then we can send it to our, our, the label's mastering engineer, and then they will do the mastering stuff. Uh, question, if the mix is clear, does it, ha does it have to be mastered? Depending on the subgenre and depending on how you have your mix um in general so if you're not planning on sending it off to a mastering engineer and that but you've got your you've got a good enough mix that's not peaking it's not going over zero on the master channel then you should be fine really you should be fine with that to be able to play out you know with other tunes like i'd say if it's hip hop or say like R&B or soul or anything like that, where there's just no need for it to be loud. There's just no need for it to be loud at all. So you are sticking around the 9, minus 9 to minus 13 LUFS, which is quiet. Um, excuse me. And that, but because of the genre, the music genre, it just doesn't need to be that loud. Maybe more around, like, I with hip-hop, I'm more around 9 RMS, minus 9 RMS, and LUFS. And that, whereas drum and bass itself, a lot of people are pushing, like, minus 5s, minus 4s, and that, like, my limit is minus 6. Maybe minus 5 at a push, if it needs to get there. Do you know what I'm saying? In that bro yeah man man yeah say around minus 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 six for the rms is what i aim for with like drum and bass and that it'll be a jungle track yeah probably so probably yeah say probably minus six minus seven because i know jungle like i know jungle's not that loud either and stuff it doesn't need to be like minus five minus fours and that meat shield henry you call this spring, it's pitiful weather. Where are you based? It was fucking gorgeous in Manchester today. Absolutely gorgeous. That's why I was a bit late, to be fair. In that, this morning, fucking spent most of the morning just out in the park and shit. And, that, and then I was late to actually, like, getting stuff done. So I spent the rest of the day trying to catch up and shit. South Coast near Ken. Yeah, I'm hearing it's not that, it's not that nice down there just yet. It's a bit rainy, rainy. But it will get nice for you soon, though. It will get nice for you soon, hopefully, Henry. In that. But, yeah. Anyway, let's run through this. In terms of, like, before I go, in terms of um, less is more and keeping things simple, uh, where's Lion Chant now? There it is. It's jokes in this one. Fingers diligently crossed, most definitely. It's coming soon, mate. It's coming. It's coming. We are. We do live in the UK. So it does get a bit... We do get the blunt end of the stick when it comes to the weather. But it'll soon come. It'll soon come. We've had a good, like, week and a half of nice weather. And not, not necessarily blazing sun just yet, but nice, bright. Nice and bright blue skies. 
like a few more blue skies than normal and shit. But yeah, so how many, how many tracks is this? 36 tracks. Lion Chant, Jungle Tings. Show you the drums. Here's the drums. There you go. Kick. So that's a kick. And it's a house kick. And then just chopped up one line of amens. Take it easy, doppy do. Thank you so much for the 100 bits once again. Way too kind, good sir. Way too good sir. I think it's uh, I think so. Yeah, it is sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, from what I remember. Way too kind, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Bless up for coming through. Legend, mate. Hope you have a wicked day. A wicked rest of your day. Amen break and I just chopped up the amen break. Yes, from the Alex. Yes, my Found a good break, compressed it, chopped it up. I knew the kick wasn't strong enough on its own to add the kick. Jobs are good in. Right, in terms of compression, that's what I did for the compression. Slow attack, slow release. Fast release, sorry. Not much on the ratio, not much on the threshold, not much at all, just studio VCA circuitry on the compression basically. <laughs> Some ideas just don't take much at all in terms of the sub. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So here's a good tip. So on the sub, I'm using the ES2. And that, um, which is um, a stock Logic synth, but it's a stereo synth, polyphonic synth. It's got it's good for it's good for subs, but if you want a mono sub, and that, but you don't have an actual mono sub synth, and that, um, for the longest time, I was using the S two and shit, and just trying to like sort of 
get the best out of it, even though it was a stereo sub, and I knew that things needed to the sub needed to be in mono. Free plugin, a free plugin that I, I found a, a while ago, and it should still be free, called uh, Bass Lane from Tone Projects. Now, what I do with it is when you when you open up this plugin on the actual track, the width is at a hundred percent. I just take the width down. So any any harmonic width that was on the sub before, it's been removed and it's been brought closer to it being mono. And for some reason, using this plugin, it seems to boost the sub as well. But now, so I shall play you an example. So without it on. Okay, switch it on with the width. Take the width off. Sick. <laughs> Just so nice. So, so nice. Gives it that extra bit of punch, takes the width off so it's more in mono. And a little, you can add a little extra bit of harmonics to make it a bit oof if you want to, which is what I did here. It's nice. And then that ducking that you're hearing is the duck from the kick. A short little duck in there that's it and then what i did was added another es2 notch on the eq so it's going through the same the exact same things i've just changed the eq initially going into it and it gives it more body it gives them some more body I think the extra thing that's on here is uh, Trash 2, sorry. On there. So Notch, Trash 2. I've taken the um, bass lane off because I wanted to stay stereo. And not keep the sub. Mono, but the actual top mid bass. Well, sorry, not top bass. Mid bass. Stereo. It just helps it to gel both of them together. Like this preset on trash is just oh trash too. It's just lovely. Clear out the middle. It's called, but that extra bit of convolution on the end, and that with the filter. Ooh. Like, yeah, at the end, mate. Nasty. Quinn, how you doing? How you bless? To see, it's been a while, man. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we I can do production history. It and it, nothing's that. It's not all jumpy and losing frames, is it? And stuff like it's not showing up on the bottom of um, my OBS that it's losing frames and stuff, and that it seems like it's okay, and that so. I don't know what I just walked into, but it sounds excellent. Seems fine to me. Wicked, wicked. I don't know what I've done, but production streams are back on the table. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy, mate. Oh, I can get back to the routine now, hopefully. I can get back to the routine. DJing on Tuesday. Tunes, making tunes for the people then. 
fucking shit, mate. But I am starving. Pizza, pizza, pizza. It was mad, but it was, you know what, Mickey? It was mad because I thought the restart, restart would help. I was doing that, but it was like literally like five minutes into the stream, it would just be freezing all over the place and the, the audio would be fine, but it would take ages for the actual video to catch up with itself. It would be like two, three seconds behind and stuff. And I just don't know why it was doing it. I had enough hard drive space. Do you know what I'm saying? In terms of RAM, from what I could tell, like there was no like storage swapping, like cache swapping with the with the memory and the storage on on the Mac Minis, because I know that it's a that's what a bad thing that these Mac Minis are known for. But yeah, like three four streams I tried to do, and yeah, just horrible watching them back and stuff, just proper jumpy all over the place. So. Yeah, don't know what's happened, but taking advantage of it because I need to stream. I miss streaming. I miss doing production streams. I had fucking a lot of fun just talking about music and making music and stuff, man. Thank fucking buzz off doing that kind of shit. So, yeah. Buzzing. Proper buzzing. I think tomorrow... I think tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to give... Um, well, at least I'm going to be streaming a lot earlier. I'm going to start streaming a lot earlier, I think, from tomorrow. And that work on some music. I need to um, do a sound pack for the Neutron. Let's get on there. I need to do a sound pack from this actual Neutron, this um, analog mono synth. Get some basses, get some leads and stuff like that out of there. And shit for the members club. And that because it's been two, three months that I've not been able to fucking do anything because i've been having problems with sound cards but i've only got this now because i've had to send my hydra hydra synth back give the hydra synth back so i need to smash the living shit out of this neutron base and actually start getting into using this patch bay on the side and stuff and like coming out with some gnarly sounds using the patch bay because i've got noodles we've got all the noodles here and shit to be able to put in. I've just not been that confident to use the patch bay just yet, but it needs to be done. It needs to be done. Good, I'll be picking your brains. I'll be picking your brain once I start processing. No problem at all. I've got noodles. It's coming from all these mod modular synth heads that have got all these like homemade synths basically from all the modules and shit. And that, yeah, I've got noodles, it's all noodles in it. I think it's Serum. I, actual DJ Serum was the first person I saw um, saying noodles, in, in drum and bass at least. And that, which is cool. It was like, right, okay, I'm not a nerd on my own. And that, <laughs> uh, can you show the bass lane plugin again? Yeah, no problem. Tone Projects is the name of the developers. Base laying um, is the name of the plugin. It's free. There is a paid version that has a lot more controls on here, but the free version is is quite tasty. I really like it. Normally, it's not used for what I'm what I'm using it for. But if you want to create more like harmonics for like sub bases, which will probably be good for when you put them through distortion units. So like using this before the distortion unit um which would be really good thanks for the recommend already downloaded already copped and downloaded and installed nice <laughs> <laughs> that's what we like shit hold on i'm not even showing you i'm there just looking there you go base lane there you go you did it there you go Basically, free. But I like it. It's wicked. I keep forgetting that I've got a stream deck and I've got to change scenes and shit like that. <laughs> it's because it's over there. Normally, I have it over here on this side. I might... Well, I might switch it back over at some point, actually, because it's a bit confusing, man. But it sticks out so much, the stream deck plus. I need to get a normal stream deck, so it's not as intrusive. 
Yeah, I'm going to have a play around with that. Most definitely. Most definitely. And as you can see, the link in the chat is right there for the Motion Gang Members Club. And shit, where you'll be able to find... Um, there's a Hydrosynth sound pack in there, as well as a Bering, um, as well as a Neutron sound pack in there. Um, there's also a vocal pack, a mini vocal pack of just like phrases and um, hooks and stuff, as well as remix stems of all the monthly tracks that have come out in the last five months and stuff. So, if you want more stuff to play around with. Join the members club and that from tier three. That's where you'll be able to get a lot of like the stems and things like that. Tier four is the top tier and that's where you can get everything. Back catalogue, Spinal Records, back catalogue, all the sound packs, all the vocal packs, all the tracks, all the stems. It does not have the chopper stems. I won't be able to do that because it's Ray Keith's tune in it. It's not my tune, so I won't be able to put out the chopper stems. But in place of the chopper stems, I actually put in the stems for Nobed. So let me load it up for you. And that Reiki would kill me if I gave out stems for like chopper and that. Like, I would actually get in trouble because I've only been licensed for it, you know. Uh, there we go. And that, so yeah, in terms of the feed, in terms of the actual memberships, so if you want everything, then top tier membership if you are a twitch sub already you do get a discount so instead of it being 10.99 dollars each month it's 7.99 for the first month if you first signed it up it's 5.49 um and in terms of what is in there for this month we've got skin graft which i um we've got the remix stems for skin graft so i'll just play skin graft now <laughs> Got the stems for in there as well. And like, if you want the stems as well as the tracks, it's like tier three. Then you'll be able to get all that. If you just want the tracks, it's tier two. And if you just want the support generally, and stuff, it's tier one. There is a, an absolutely free tier which I'm going to get set up and that just for people that want to keep up to date and I think this is where I'll be able to like do back like behind the scenes and stuff like that. That's this month's tune for May. That's a monthly track for May, and there's the remix stems there for it as well. So if you want to take that play about with it, they're not technically royalty free. Like you won't be able to take them and like release them on another label um, with those sounds in there because I still they are my sounds, so I still reserve the right to the sound um, in terms of the tracks and that. But the sound packs that I do put in there, they will be royalty free. The vocal packs that I do put put in there, they will be royalty free. Like any in anything in terms of like sound packs and vocal packs, 
they're definitely royalty free. But in terms of the remix stems, they're more they are more for people to just mess around with. But then again, you could take these sounds, you know, and if you fuck them up enough, distortion, reverse, this, that, and the third, and make them your own, then you're all good. Do you know what I mean? But if you were to take the sounds ver verbatim and just put them in your own thing and that then, yeah. But that, like, yeah. And I'm saying that in terms of, like, I'm saying that as a hip-hop producer that would go out and find samples and chop and screw and I don't want people to know where. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know? that like these sounds and samples have come from so i'm gonna fuck them up so if you do that and you end up making something completely gnarly out of them yeah man go sick you don't need to tell me shit because i'm not going to be able to fucking figure it out anyway in shit and i'm encouraging that get creative with the sounds man if anything yeah do that if you find if you really like these remix them so like here's knobhead For this, you've got the stems for this in there, and that and you could go crazy, go crazy with them, go crazy with the drums and stuff like that. In terms of like last month's monthly track, yep, we've got the real VIP remix of uh, Ray Keith's Chopper. did a video breakdown actually of okay i've got killing my dream there where is it where is it stampede what was the first one i did i think the first breakdown was chopper yeah so in january i did a try an actual video breaking down everything in chopper and that's it again on tier two Tier 2, you get all the trap breakdowns, as well as all the dressing gown vlogs where I'm talking about music in the music in the industry, mental health, things that I just go through in terms of like trying to be an artist, trying to run a label and things like that, as well as dealing with mental health because I do suffer from like severe depression, you know, anxiety and PTSD in that like complex ptsd uh in shit so like i talk about how to like how i deal with things like that you know like it says here lessons learned and refocusing on the positives because it can get you down man it can get you fucking down trying to navigate through this shit do you know what i mean but yeah tier two you got all of that like i said uh motion gang sound pack bearing a neutron nine uh neutron bases and sounds so a couple of pads in there as well. A couple of pads and leads in there as well. Um, where's the... Yep, here's the hooks. Five vocal hooks for the uh, mini pack. Uh, here's the hydrosynth sound pack as well. 
and stuff. Four pad loops, two bases, and that. Like, yeah, man. For the heads. So this was the January's um, monthly track. You don't know that, yeah. Beautiful to suffer with it. We're all fighting through together. Is fuck them up, go crazy. The main thing I want for the Motion Gang, the Discord, just like building this community is just people to get creative, man. Give them the tools to their beads. Because don't worry, like, I'll be putting like free packs and stuff like that in the Discord as well and shit. But if you want monthly stuff, like, if you want to get new monthly stuff to be able to play around with. It's the Motion Gang Members Club where you're going to be able to get it. Again, is all the, like, Remix Stems, Knobhead, Skin Graph, Darkstone, Never Yours. I didn't even play those tunes, actually. So, Darkstone. I fucking love Darkstone, to be fair. I'm glad that this one's just for the Motion Gang members. I can play it and everyone's like, Rob, where would you get that? It's like, no, you got to be part of the gang, you get me? <laughs> All I need is a dark room, strobe light, space line, hit you like a harpoon, hold tight, my G, buzzing like a cartoon, drop two dits, oh shit, now we can't move, my tits. <laughs> This is the thing, because the more people that join up as well, I am going to do, like, another remix competition with the, like, stems that are in here as well. And that, and then from there, that's where, like, people will be able to get releases on the label and shit, and it will just be the Motion Gang members as part of that. But I'm going to need more of the members just to make it fair so it's not just a pool of like three or four people <laughs> in terms of you know the remix competitions and stuff like that in the future and stuff but that's what i mean like it'll all be all within house and shit man like and when oh, when i start to hear what people come up with from these stems and shit and using the sounds and stuff like that oh, it's gonna be so sick it's gonna be so sick man i'm so excited there's stuff like this as well, never yours. <laughs> I 
Billy in it. Never stone, never yours, and dark, never stone, dark yours. <laughs> that was what was about to happen. <laughs> does anyone else's brain do that? Like, mine does, man. Just swaps round words and, like, the first letters of, like, words and shit like that. Like, you know, the tear cater found my jacket that I left on the field. It's, it's like, tear cater instead of caretaker. <laughs> Does anybody else's brain flip out like that sometimes? Or is it just me? Is it just me who's a bit like... <laughs> in shit? <laughs> but yeah, man. You got all those your five tracks for the last five months, six months. Going to be celebrating six months of the Motion Gang Members Club as well. And uh, next month's going to be Chocker Block, man. Next month is going to be Chocker Block. And that mate? I've got flipping... 7th of June, I'm in Leeds, and that, playing uh, deep, going back-to-back with Peachy in Leeds. Also, we've got the Motion, uh, the Three Years of Spinal Records remix competition as well. And shit, it's going off. A week later, I'm going to be in Rotterdam. I can't wait to get the flyer for that, but I'm uh, hopefully I'm going to be playing Jungle in Rotterdam a week later. And that from the 7th and then on the 21st we've got uh, the 5 years of forward motion event ray train event right here on Twitch from Friday 12, p- 12 midday to Monday 12 midday UK time and uh, once we've got all the slots filled um, for that and the link is right there in the chat as well once we've got all the slots filled that for that that's when I'll be able to get a flyer together for that so I can show that off as well, but I do need to get that done soon, really. <laughs> and shit, well, yeah, man, it's going to be busy. It's going to be busy. But yeah, if you want to get involved, the link is in the bio of my Twitch. My Twitch to get to the website, diligentfingers.uk. And shit, I should have had code.co.uk, but someone stole it off me. They actually waited until I missed the payment and then stole it off me. Bastards. But I like Diligent Fingers UK. Ties in with the Twitch channel as well and stuff. Plus, it's forward motion merch and shit as well. Socks are sold out though. (laughs) (laughs) And shit. Well, yeah, right. We are going to raid out. I hope you're available in July. Yeah, I'll be available in July. And that July will be a lot more chill compared to June at that point. It'll just be music releases that I'll be worrying about. I think at June... Is it August? No. Have I just fucked myself up? Yeah. Hot pressy. Hot... Um, rolled EP is supposed to be coming out in July, not August. 
July. So, yeah. But, yeah, I'll be available in July, most definitely. Right, we're going to raid out. And that, whilst we're raiding out, we're going to play the latest track, Skin Graph. <laughs> Ghost Runners on, not seen Ghost Runners for ages. I think Mouse is on, Mouse is on. Then you get someone who's got nose on this. DJ Jesus. Let's go and see him. PM latest than that. Um, I may be on early or during the day working on some tracks now that we can actually make music on stream again. I'm gonna try and figure out why that was a problem before. And shit. Uh, and then in the evening, I'm gonna try and hook up Coffee Talk. Coffee Talk back part two. But it's not gonna be called Coffee Talk. I'm gonna have to figure out a different name and shit for it because it's not going to be called coffee talk <laughs> but now but it'd be good to like chill out catch up chat with the gang chat with the community once again like we used to do before because i do miss it man but until then thank you once again for locking in take care of yourself take care of your mental health why good mental health as well and as always blessings to you all